out to see uh, lots of old friends and uh, some new friends as well. When was the last time you considered yourself to be on pilgrimage? Some people will go on pilgrimage to places far away, like Israel, to visit places whose names we've heard over so many years as the story of faith is being shared. Or to Kobe in France, Iona in Scotland, Lab St James ending up in Spain, or an ABM pilgrimage to partner churches in the Philippines or Vanuatu or Papua New Guinea. These can be hugely life giving, and drawing from experience of them can provide significant insight into the journey of life and faith we all travel. In 2005, I was asked by Bishop Godfrey Fryer to organise a pilgrimage that would take people from Australia to share with the Anglican Church in PNG. First in their celebrations of Martha's Day at Martha's School in Ora Province, and then walking back to Port Moresby over the Kokoda Trail. At a personal level, I was very keen to go because I wanted to see friends in PNG again. I hoped the pilgrimage would initiate relationship and partnership between the Diocese of Rockhampton and the Diocese of Popham Daughter. And that year, I had formally become an Australian citizen. And from the reading I'd done, the Kokoda campaign was very significant in Australia, asserting its political independence from Great Britain, possibly for the first time. Nine of us trained hard for six months, two in Canberra, one in northern New South Wales, and six in Rockhampton. Though we had a couple of phone link-ups and group emails, we all met together for the first time at Brisbane Airport. And for the next 10 days, we were a small group of men in community together on pilgrimage. We prayed together each morning, trekked and engaged with local community each day, reflected on the day's experiences each evening, and again prayed together. There are lots of stories I'm not allowed to share. <laughs> But in the context of that small group, we had some highs and lows, physical, emotional, and spiritual. But we supported each other and learned much about ourselves, the people we travel with, and the communities we journeyed through. There is one story I have permission to share, where it does not mention snoring, chafing, or bridge crossings. <laughs> Early um, on in our pilgrimage, we discovered that one of our team was allergic to dehydrated food. Consequently, he had tin peaches and rice for eight days, and he lost seven and a half kilograms. Mm -hmm. As he became weaker, we sheared the load of his pack until the last three days he walked without a pack. As if this was not enough, Dennis was walking the track in memory of his 21-year-old son, who had committed suicide two years earlier. At the bottom of the last valley, looking up at the last climb, was out of gas, physically and emotionally exhausted. I was walking behind him and saw his shoulders sag as he bent over his seat. One of the Melanesian guides, Francis, who had many yarns with Dennis during the track, moved forward and without saying anything, put out his hand. And Dennis, who assures me he had never before in his life held hands with another man, reached out and held hands with Francis hour until we reached the top. In that intensive time of pilgrimage, we shared something of ourselves at a deep level. The strengths and the weaknesses, the joys and the brokenness. We supported one another, prayed together, reflected on Bible readings, sometimes got cranky with each other, and sometimes cried together. It was awesome. For me, the experience affirmed the potential that intentional pilgrimage in small groups can have on our journey of life and faith. The former Uniting Church moderator and Christian writer John Mountain notes in his small group leadership book, now available to download for free, all of you if you like to find good quality free resources, that the early church was a federation of small groups spread out over the Roman Empire unencumbered by church building. Mm. He affirms that good small group life is vital for the spiritual health of both individuals and for communities. So I am delighted to launch the Pilgrim series today because it invites us to intentionally develop the small group life of our church using excellent material that will help our people. 
people grow in relationship with God. Over recent years, 42% of parishes in the Brisbane Diocese have participated in the NCD uh, process, which has identified that for most of these parishes, an increase in biblical reading and prayer will be enormously important for the current and future health of parish communities and the wider diocese. As Bishop for the Western Region, I will be inviting parishes to pilgrimage in 2015 and 2016 using the four school terms as a framework so we can journey together through the four books of the follow stage next year and the four books of the grow stage in 2016. I give thanks for the contemporary use of multimedia and printed text in the pilgrim material and encourage you to watch some of the short introductory sessions to each session available, which again is free of charge on the Pilgrim Course website. I think the Pilgrim Course offers a refresher to those who have been Christian for a long time and reminds us that in our journey of faith we are called to lifelong learning, reflection, service and prayer. But I was reminded last weekend that the Pilgrim material can also be used as a tool for evangelism. I spent last weekend in Tara and on the Saturday evening, she had a lovely meal with 12 people at the home of a lay minister. The next day at church, one of the couples who I shared with at the dinner brought a neighbouring friend of theirs to church for the first time. She is a young mother with two children, and she asked if we could share together after morning tea. To cut a long story short, after a good number of years away from the church, she was called to explore the promises that were made on her behalf when she was baptized as a baby. In God's grace, I had a leader's book and book one of the pilgrim material. I asked the friend who brought her to church if she would be willing to go on pilgrimage using the material and prepare her neighbor for confirmation. We prayed together and I left soon after. But clearly, God's spirit has been at work in the lives of these fantastic people over the past week. Because yesterday, the lay minister I stayed with called my office to book me in for confirmation next year. <coughs> so there's so much to thank God for already. If I were launching a ship, I would break a perfectly good bottle of champagne. <laughs> but this is not a ship. It is material that will take people on a journey of deepening relationship with God. And so I'd like to launch the pilgrim material in the life of this diet. God of grace, we give thanks for the mystery and the gift of our lives. For each breath and heartbeat, this makes our lives possible. We give thanks for the things that nourish us in faith. We give thanks for the vision of those who call gifted people to create the pilgrim material. <coughs> we give thanks for the generosity of those who are willing to share it beyond the boundaries of Great Britain. We offer this material to you and pray that it be used to share your love, to develop a Christian life and loving relationship with you throughout the many communities of this large diocese. We ask for 